Burbage just published an article in the Wall Street Journal. And Bill, Mr. Bill Burbage, Bill, you had over 400 something comments, my understanding. Talk to us about what happened. I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You're famous. You've inspired a song. You've inspired a song. I mean, this is because of you. you this is song. dedicated to you. Let me just ask everybody in here. How many people in here is livelihood depends on the strength and dexterity of their hands, their labor? Does your income come from your labor, or does it come from capital or some other investment? Well, well for me, it's both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the majority of the poor people in the world in this, and in this country, their, their <coughs> livelihood comes from their labor. That's it. That's all they've got. There's a 15.3% tax on that labor in this country. And where does it go? It's been into that Ponzi scheme. <laughs> now, if that's not tyranny, there's no such thing as tyranny. And if anybody disagrees with it, I'd love to hear their argument. Now, I don't know if anybody plans it that way, but that's what we've got. And that, as the little song points out here, that little tax started out the maximum contribution was sixty dollars a year in 1937. Now it's sixteen thousand three hundred forty dollars and forty cents. Is that enough to, to make it work? No. No, they're trying to raise the cap on Social Security to unlimited, exactly like it is on Medicare, and also start taxing investment income. And it's my opinion they're going to do it while we sit on our ass and allow it. That's my talk, Steve. Well, what, what about, what are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing we got to do about it is talk about it. I did have a few uh, comments on, the, on a blog yesterday. The lead editorial in the Wall Street Journal was talking about Obama, the, the no-jobs president. And there were, there were 612 comments yeah, made know, in a while. Yeah. They're, they're still coming in today. What were the nature of the comments about your uh, about, I mean, other than the usual, I mean, well, the yeah. was, uh, yeah. was I just happened to have them with me. Yeah. <laughs> Ideological battle in progress in this country, and common sense is losing it to the progressive ideologues. Ms. Rachel Maddow opines daily in a nationally televised commercial that Social Security is not a Ponzi scheme, it is not bankrupting us, it is not an outrage, it is working. There are undoubtedly many people who believe that. Do you? What does the editorial staff of the Wall Street Journal think? I can't get it to say. Conservative press is abdicated. To create jobs, the sovereign must remove as many obstacles as he can between the entrepreneur and his ability to make a profit. The biggest of those obstacles is the payroll tax. It hinders both the workman and also those who might be disposed to employ him. It is also embedded in the cost of everything that is made in this country. A minimum wage worker, $7 a quarter an hour, earns $15,080 per year. $1,153.62 is withheld from his paycheck for the payroll tax. An additional $1,153.62 is added to that to cover the employer's portion of his payroll tax. It is not shown on his pay stub. Many employees probably don't even know about it. Thus, on gross earnings of $15,080, 15.3%, goes into the payroll tax. What is the purpose of the payroll tax? It goes into what politicians call a pay-as-you-go retirement plan. In the private sector, it is called a Ponzi scheme, and it is illegal. Ask Bernie Madoff. Does Ms. Madoff think that this is helping the minimum wage worker? I'm sure that she has the best of intentions, but if I were a minimum wage worker, I wouldn't want Mrs. Maddow helping me. <laughs> no, no, no. 
In one of the GOP presidential candidates, Mr. Perry called Social Security a Ponzi scheme. Mr. Romney disagreed. One of them was wrong. Which one was? <laughs> Some guy responded to this and said there is an indirect connection between Social Security and the payroll tax. I think the payroll tax is the biggest job destroyer in this country. I think this country would take off like a rocket if you got rid of it. But if you get rid of it, where's Mr. Denton's next benefit check going to come from? <laughs> and mine. You know, it's a problem. Not long ago, the Wall Street Journal itself said it's easy to fix. Charles Krauthammer said the same thing earlier this year. And Alan Blinder, professor at Princeton University, said the same thing. It's not easy to fix. And it's going to be painful to fix. But it's going to happen one of these days. It's only a question of who's going to get hurt and when. But it is going to happen. There's no question about that. Let me read my response to the guy that said that there's only an indirect, it only applies indirectly to jobs. President Ronald Reagan appointed the Greenspan Commission to fix Social Security in 1982-83. Following the implementation of the Greenspan Commission's recommendations, the revenues came gushing in. On the floor of the United States Senate in 1990, 22 years ago, the late Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan, Democrat <coughs> New York, said, quote, the trust funds are now rising at approximately $1.5 billion a week and will shortly be rising at $2 billion, soon $3 billion, then $4 billion a week. Now, that's a surplus coming in. They will, in sum, accumulate a surplus of some $3 trillion in the next 30 years. $3 trillion is a sizable sum. This money is coming in. It is the largest revenue stream in the history of public finance. One of the extraordinary facts is that it has come upon us almost unawares, and we have yet to make a decision about how to treat these monies. This is on the floor of the United States Senate. So how did they treat those monies? They put them in the general treasury to be spent like all other taxes in exchange for some special government bonds. They're called IOUs in the common street. <laughs> Thus converting an asset, savings, of the Social Security Administration into a liability of the U.S. Treasury. The money was subsequently spent for current consumption. The late Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan described the operation as embezzled on the floor of the United States Senate. Uh, that's where we are. That's what we have. Has any of the candidates said anything about this? When you hear somebody talking about fixing Social Security by raising the cost, that is delaying the retirement age at which you collect your benefits, and increasing the taxes, which is, you know, raising the, the, the limit on paying taxes, you still have a poverty scheme. There is no such thing as a retirement plan that does not involve saving and investing. Saving means a surplus of production over consumption. If there isn't any such surplus, as soon as you quit work, you don't have anything to live on. You can't ever quit work. It means putting away some acorns in the fall when they're plentiful so you'll have some in the winter when they're not. Even a caveman or a squirrel knows them. But that's the world we live in. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to do anything about it? I can't even get anybody's attention. The Wall Street Journal won't admit that it's a Ponzi scheme. They'll let somebody else call it a Ponzi scheme and print it, but they won't call it a Ponzi scheme. I can't get them to take a position. Why not? The only problem with uh, <clears throat> Americans trying to save is most Americans won't save. Well, okay, they, uh, they say they're going to take out a life insurance policy for their wife if they <clears throat> drop uh, to make her whole, but they failed to take it out. All of a sudden, he's dead. She's living on the street. Okay? So, got to have something. For those of you who don't know, this is Al Denton, retired military. Yeah, but a lot of people don't want to eat and healthy either. Are we going to mm -hmm. force them all to eat healthy? And no. why should they save when the government says they pick up? That's the safety net, so why right. should they? Well, back in the 30s, when it was first set up, most people are dying at 48, okay? So probably when it was first set up, no one really realized that somebody would live to be 90 years old. 
so they had a free shot of money coming in to the government. But without paying taxes, without paying Social Security, how are we going to get our roads built? How are we going to get our everything else that we need? How are we going to pay for our military? Okay? So, so we got to take a collection up some way to make sure we can get all these things done. Consumption tax. <clears throat> yeah, but the only problem about a consumption tax is it's so easy to raise. It, you, like in Europe, right now, they're being taxed by about 70%. Okay, because I I lived in I lived in a lot of countries over there. They're paying tax on everything. They got a truck. They got a truck in Holland that can drive down the street and say that house has three TVs, that house has four radios, and they slap a tax on every one of them. But now, if you add up all the taxes we're paying and the fees we're paying, which is a tax, what are we paying? Yeah, state taxes and federal taxes. Right, right. Tax and white fixtures. Right. So, 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 so
Well, let me uh, interrupt the conversation just a moment. Uh, see, we've had this conversation before. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, I'd like to thank, uh, like to thank Mr. Burbage for you know, heading the, spearheading the topic, the actual uh, details of it, and Mr. Gannings for actually doing the song this week. And I'm sure this will come back to us in the future. <laughs> we have a congressional candidate with us. Let's hear another tune, man. Play Dixie. Dixie. Play Dixie.